So the second half of 6.3 is the second way that we're going to discuss how to factor something with two terms. And that's called the sum or the difference of cubes. So instead of square numbers, we're talking about cube numbers. And this time, they can either be added or subtracted. It can be either one. So we're going to have a formula in a moment for when I have a cube number plus a cube number. We'll have one formula for that. And we'll have a a different one, well, I say that it's different. Really, once we get to looking at it, it's not. But anyway, we'll have a different one for when they're subtracted, the difference of cubes. So maybe we should go look at a bunch of cube numbers, kind of like we looked at a bunch of square numbers earlier. So that'll be our next, uh, our next move. Okay, so let's do that. Let's look at some cube numbers. But first, let's talk about what a cube number is. Now we said a square number is a number that you could square root and get a whole number. So a cube number is a number that you can cube root and get a whole number. Okay. <clears throat> In fact, another way of saying that is the same way we reset it with square root. A square number is another number squared, so you could say the cube number is another number cubed. For example... 1 is a cube number because it's 1 cubed. It's 1 times 1 times 1. 1 to the third power. 8 is a cube number because it's 2 cubed. Or 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. So 8 is the cube number that goes with 2. Now what's the cube number that goes with 3? It's equivalent to asking you, what's 3 cubed? 21. Close. It's 27. That's right. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. <coughs> the cube number that goes with 4 is 64. Somebody might, <coughs> excuse me, somebody might know the one that goes with 5. It's 125. Six cubed is 216. And the next one that I'd suggest that you be familiar with is a thousand, which is the cube number for 10. So if it's some number besides the ones that I've got listed here, you could always use the cube root function on your calculator and see if you get a whole number. Well, now that we're familiar with a few cube numbers, let's look at the formula for the sum or difference of cubes. If you have the sum of two cubes, here's how it's going to factor. In the first parenthesis, you're going to have a plus b. And in the second parenthesis, you're going to have a squared, then minus ab, then plus b squared. In 
If it's the difference of two squares, instead, then in the first parenthesis, you're going to have a minus b, and in the second parenthesis, you'll have a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now, a few minutes ago, I made about halfway made an argument that these two formulas really aren't different. And here's what I mean by they're not really different. Notice in this first one, I've got a plus in the middle. In the first parenthesis, I got a plus. In the second parenthesis, I got a minus in the middle. So in the first parenthesis, that sign stayed the same. In the second parenthesis, that sign switched. Do you see the same thing happened over here? I've got minus here. In the first parenthesis, that sign stays the same. It's minus. And in the second parenthesis, in the middle, it switches to plus. So you keep the same pattern whether you have sum of two cubes or difference of two cubes. So in my beginning algebra classes, I always uh, give this, this uh, formula on the test. They don't have to memorize it. But honestly, the students who learn how to do the sum or difference of cubes, they know it by the time the test rolls around. They don't even need for me to give it to them. Okay, and so this class I do require you to know it. And I think after a couple of examples, you'll know it too. Let me illustrate. Let's try a couple of these problemos. Get the screen the way I want it here. Okay, let's change the pen color. And let's look at this. 27 x cubed plus 8. So let's say it's about a week and a half, two weeks from now. You're on your test. The direction say factor. And this problem pops up. So here's the way that we want to think through this. We want to say first, is there a common factor? That's always what we say first. Class, do you have a common factor between 27 and 8? No, we don't. That's right. So then we move on to the second question. How many terms do I have? This has two. And when there's two terms, the first question you're going to ask is, is it the difference of squares? Well, 27 is not a square number, x is not being squared, and 8 is not a square number either. So we strike out on all three of those. It only takes one strike to, to make it not the difference of square. So it's not that. Then the, sec the next question we're going to ask is, is it the sum or difference of cubes? And this one is. Okay, 27 goes with 3, x is being cubed, and 8 goes with 2, right? Okay, now the next thing that I say is the most important part of this lesson, in my estimation. Here's the deal. Here's the starting place. If it's a cubes problem, I'm going to encourage you to write something cubed and something cubed. Once you figure out that it's cubes, that's what we want to do first. <clears throat> okay, now what do you have to cube to get 27x cubed? 3x. So this is going to be 3x cubed. What do you have to cube to get 8? It's 2. That's right. So 2 is going back here. Now, the reason that that's a good thing to do is we just identified what the a and the b are. Okay? My a is 3x, and my b is 2. Now, I really only need three more things. If you look at both of these formulas over here, the a and the b both go in the first parenthesis. So our first parenthesis is already taken care of. The three other things that I need are always a squared, a, B, and B squared. So let's list those out. And 
a squared, a b, and b squared. Now the nice thing is, I really don't even need to look back at my problem now. Um, in fact, to save confusion, we can cover it up. If I know a, then I can figure out a squared. If a is 3x, then a squared would be 3x times 3x, or 9x squared. Class, if a is 3x and b is 2, then what's a b going to be? 6x, that's right. And if I know that b is 2, then b squared is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. Okay, so I've got everything I need now to go fill in to this first formula. Remember, in this first parenthesis, we're going to have a plus in the middle. And in the second parenthesis, that's going to switch in the middle. Okay, it's all over but the shouting now. So the first parenthesis is going to be 3x plus 2. That's the a plus the b. And then in the second parenthesis, I'll have a squared is now 9x squared minus ab minus 6x, and it's always plus b squared or plus 4. 3x plus 2 for one factor, 9x squared minus 6x plus 4 for the other factor. Okay, and that's the big picture idea behind the sum or difference of cubes. We're going to do another one just to practice a little more. But really, that's, that's the main portion right there. Well, let's do another one. So I'll move all that off the screen this time. Hang on here a moment, David. All right, let's do another one, Mr. Block. Well, that sounds like a good idea. Uh, let's do this. 375 y cubed plus 3. Well, hang on. I changed my mind. Let's make that minus 3. As we did a plus on the last one, let's do a subtraction one this time. So, what are you guys thinking first? There's only one answer to this every time I ask it. Okay. So the only possibility of a common factor is 3. So the, what you're really checking to do is see if 3 goes into 375. So, go. Does 3 go into 375, class? It goes in 125 times, doesn't it? So let's take a 3 out. So really I have 3 times 125 y cubed, and 3 factored out of 3 leaves 1. Now what we're looking at next then is if we can factor the 125 y cubed minus 1. We're not going to throw away the 3. That's going to be part of our answer no matter what. Now, so I look at this and I say it's got two terms. I ask if it's the difference of squares. 125 is not a square number, so it's not that. Then I ask if it's the difference of cubes. And this one is. Okay? So, what I say earlier... If it's a cubes problem, the starting place is always something cubed and something cubed. To get 125y cubed, we would cube 5y. To get 1, we would cube 1. Okay, so now my A 
is 5y, my b is 1, and the other three things that we always need are a squared, a b, and b squared. Now you fill in those three blanks and I'll catch up to you. So the a squared would have been 5y times 5y, or 25y squared. a b would have been 5y times 1, or 5y. And b squared would have been 1 times 1, or 1. Now as long as we remember to keep the sign in the first parenthesis the same, we're going to have a minus in there and change it in the middle on the second one, so we're going to have a plus in there. And we should be in business. So here we go. Here's our answer. We can't throw the 3 away. It's part of our answer. A minus B is going to be 5Y minus 1. A squared is 25Y squared plus AB is plus 5Y. Plus B squared is plus 1. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you factor with two terms. You either do the difference of squares or you do the sum or difference of cubes. Now if it's not one of those and you can't factor out a common factor, then it's going to be prime. Okay, then it won't factor. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so for the A, B answer, you got 5Y. All you did was multiply the A and the B together to get that A, B? Yep. That's all. Uh, Shiana, we were not going to do one more. Were you wanting to do one more? Say that again. Actually, I take that back. We are going to do one more. <laughs> it's just not right now. Okay? So hang on. You're going to think that I've forgotten, but I really haven't forgotten. Okay, let's get you an assignment for Chapter 6, Section 3. That assignment's going to be on page 337, and it's going to be 7 through 14, 19, 20, and 37 through 51.